All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the Chi League Invitational European Season Region. 15. Excited to be here for multiple reasons. Not only is this a great online winning. tournament, eight teams from the European Region are going to be clashing over the next three days to, to try to play for that $10,000 prize pool that's on the line, thanks to Chi League. But to top it all off, what, tw not even, like, I want to say like eight hours ago? Patch 7.22 officially came out, and boy, is it going to change some things. We'll talk plenty about that throughout the broadcast today, but to kick things off, we got our first best of one. We're going to be following Group A action here on this stream. On the second stream will be Group B action. For Group A, we have Windstrike taking on the final tribe in a best out of one for the very first match of the day. I'm Breaky CPK, and my co-caster will be Hasbaz. How you doing, man? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm doing very well. It's just as you say, massive excitement this morning. We're, we wake up, there's this uh, brand new patch on the horizon. Everyone has an axe, and we're going to see how things work out. And a whole new interesting set of bands. Obviously, the two new heroes added to Captain Moe's, Mars and I, they didn't want to let them through just then. And the final tribe, even respecting the techies. I... <laughs> This is whenever you get the chance to cast a, a match right after patch. I've had the opportunity, thankfully, to be able to do it several That's times so after a bigger patch, especially. It, it just everything goes out the window. You kind of just go Why with the flow, because as you mentioned, we have a Mars ban, an IO ban, two heroes that now are back introduced into Captain's Mode, the Techies ban. I mean, things are just going to be so different. There's some teams that will want to try to go with the old school comfort factor and not necessarily want to make too many changes with the patch, but then there's others that are willing to experiment. And for it, let's be honest, an online tournament where it's a $10,000 prize pool, so there's good money on the line, Radiant but something tells me this kind of event, especially with being so shortly after, we're going to see teams willing to experiment. So excited for all of it. We'll obviously bring up any changes that we're uh, aware of when uh, the heroes are picked and do our best there, but... Check out the patch notes if you haven't, it, guys. It's crazy. Anyways, we got a Nyx Assassin first pick. Chen is the only response for Windstrike, and there's Beastmaster also to go with it. So much to say already, but that's the yeah, starting it's, of the draft. Okay. Uh, so, so the Nyx Assassin, you know, not much to say about him. Always just a solid hero all around. But Chen getting... Um, uh, what what spell is it? It's changed to the aura. Divine favor. It? The divine favor. It's now changed to an aura affecting everyone around him. Ten and Beastmaster, seconds. his main change was this Aghanim Sept upgrade. You know, just able to use those Five wild axes seconds. as soon as they come up to you. Maybe that's a new viable build for the Beastmaster. That, I remember Ten when those wild axes, you know, they first got changed. Oh, they, they used to be the first thing you max and now able to use them again and again maybe that's something wind striker thinking about bad. or maybe they're just going for more push who knows yeah to, to clarify again there's literally zero cooldown it's just a matter of the axes coming back to you now to, to start this off let's let's be very clear a lot of these axe changes Dial it requires the agnum's scepter so I, I feel like people are overreacting a little bit on some of the changes in the, in the Radiant idea that like they're, they're almost overlooking the fact that it requires an axe. They're like, holy crap, this new ability is insane on this hero. It's like, it's not, I mean, come on, cool, cool, calm down. It's still 4,200 gold that you need to spend or even 6,200 gold if you want to because of the fact that an ally can, of course, give it via a recipe if they happen to be very wealthy, but you wouldn't expect that until a very late game. So realistically, you know, the, on a lot of these heroes, we're not necessarily going to be seeing it, but Going back to Beastmaster, that is one I certainly Five can't see. It's already a hero that potentially could be building it anyways. And the fact that it's just a zero cooldown on Wild Axes, Radiant I would not be surprised if that's something that comes out. Yeah, uh, I mean, Beastmaster, he's able to get himself a decent amount of farm. And, oh, the, the T, we'll talk about the, the TA, TA in a second. But yeah, Beastmaster, he's able to get a decent amount of farm. I, I definitely don't think you should rush Ags if you're going for it. You know, that Vlad's, it does give your team the sustain, the ability to push, and you might want the medallion or an initiation item. But, you know, it, as the game gets later, you know, it isn't something to be overlooked. Remaining. And uh, Brewmaster, uh, his Ags isn't really that Five crazy, just a bit more remaining. speed to the Bruling. So I don't think that ch actually changes what is... Uh, strong about this brewmaster hero you know he's just uh so good in lane with the built-in evasion with the built-in mischance pretty survival and almost a guaranteed kill as soon as he hits level six but i'll let you talk about the templar assassin well it's kind of to the point i was just making this is one of those examples where the ags buff to the hero and now the fact that she has one is maybe not as crazy when you when you when you kind of calm down a little bit and think about it 
I have no clue ultimately in the end. It perhaps could be one of the most ridiculous things ever. But yes, the Templar Assassin now gets a scepter effect that allows her to teleport to her traps after a two second channel. Seconds, and man. it also does not break meld, by the way, so she could do it while invis. And it's a 30 Five second seconds, cooldown man. to do said cast. So she all of a sudden becomes, you know, this hero that can teleport around the map. That does sound pretty crazy on paper. Again, she needs the axe to do it. Will we see it? I don't know, but it's something that's very cool. I, I, I mean, we talk about map movement, and um, I, I remember when you and me, Breaky, we were uh, we were casting NA and JStorm. They love this Chen for the exact reason of the map movement, just because he allows you to get that split push on and allows you to get those favorable lanes. And, you know, if Windstrike really do want to go for a whole bunch of cheese, I can just imagine, you know, a TA pushing a lane, recalled to another lane, TP's back to the trap, gets recalled. You know, the map movement could be absolutely insane for the side of Windstrike. Mm-hmm. Rubik is going to be the fourth pick for Windstrike, going along with the lamp. Lich coming out on the side of the final tribe. So drafts developing. And all right, so taking away that Ags discussion for now, uh, you are right. Windstrike certainly has some good mobility. Um, the Rubik, I suppose there's a couple of things to spell still right now that are pretty solid. It's not screaming Rubik to me, but... Uh, certainly a game that he can get away with being somewhat effective. Troll Warlord, though, the core option for the final tribe. Solid matchup into the Templar Assassin with those whirling axes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the the, tr the troll. He was a very uh, solid carry in the last patch. Hasn't received uh, really? any nerfs or uh, any buffs and, unless we talk about the axe that we're not talking about. So the Rubik, really? I, I think they just like it as a solid four position support, really. Uh, they they play it very well on Lil. Um like Lil, Lil's Rubik was really one to watch. Uh, I saw it mostly during the Epicenter qualifiers, but he's very good on this hero. Hero, He was able to make so much space for the rest of his team. Yeah, we were so caught up talking about the patch and everything, understandably so. It would be plenty more to come, but you're all right. Windstrike is a team that, of course, just qualified for the minor uh, out of the CIS region. Lil, a part of this roster, he's, he, he went on a bit of an adventure, I guess you could say, to even other regions, but ultimately he found his way back home in the CIS region. And it's cool to see a team like this certainly uh, qualifying for the minor. They're going up against TFT, a team that came up just shy of qualifying for the minor and playing in arguably the toughest region, of course, in the European region. Uh, they lost to both NIP and Alliance uh, just uh, a couple of days ago. And so they're coming uh, perhaps a little bitter off of that, but again, a season that... Unfortunately, we're not able to make any bigger events despite sticking together for the longest time and uh, being honestly a very solid team. So I do expect them to be one of the favorites in this event with saying that, but we'll see what they bring. Yeah, the, the final tribe, you do have to feel heartbroken with them. It feels like every single major or minor, they're just one step away. And with this Naga pick by the final tribe, I mean, she was a very strong hero um, in the last patch. And it seems they actually just want the Troll Warlord uh, TA matchup um favoring uh the troll in this mid lane versus the ta and i guess maybe you know you talked about, about those whirling axes up against the ta and they probably think that's enough for the Ten troll to be able to range um uh, yeah to lane versus the ta five seconds yeah that's uh that's a good point so it is going to be troll into the templar assassin with nagasar in safe lane uh being played by frost aka nox and uh, it was his former Han name always like to bring that up a player that was a great core player in his Han days. Uh, of course, all these players do have that history. And uh, damn it, I feel like, again, I have to bring that up every time I cast a team like this. Proud of it. So we'll see uh, how he does. A hero that I can't say I'm familiar with him playing, though, to be honest. So that, I am intrigued by that because Nagasaren didn't receive anything. She didn't receive did. anything, I don't think. Yeah. She's not even mentioned on the patch notes at all. Yeah, she did not get anything. So curious there, but uh, Windstrike, what are they final picking? It is going to be a safe lane hero. I mean, who the hell knows? Yeah, I, I mean, one of the things I think Windstrike, they obviously have a very tempo based lineup. There's not really anyone who you can pick who really uh, outpaces Naga unless you want to risk it with the Terra Blades. But um, it, it's, I don't think it's uh, really worth doing that kind of thing. So I think they're looking for a tempo based uh, carry, Sven, and there Sven. certainly is one with the Sven. It is, but uh, you're dealing with Troll and Naga Siren. I, I mean, both good and bad, right? Where Sven with a cleave, great against Naga Siren from that aspect. But you're dealing with Whirling Axes. You're dealing with two types of ensnares from each of those heroes. I uh, That seems like an iffy pick to me 
really for this fan, just kind of off the top of my head, but um, one that could certainly shine, but yeah, the, the, the constant kite, which is always a factor for Sven, I am uh, worried about for win strike. Yeah, they, they do have, uh, I, I'm looking at like actual solid stuns for the side of the final stripe though. And uh, uh, obviously you do have the Sinister Gaze as well as the Impale, but there's not really that much to hold him in position. And the thing is, if you're focusing down silent, I wouldn't be surprised if the rest of the side, if this Kumantier is uh, busy having a go at your back lines. So, you know, the, the, the Sven, who's very tanky, might get kited, but then uh, what are you going to do about this uh, TA? So I, I honestly quite like the side of Winstrike because it feels to me like they're all going to peak at a similar point. And this Troll Warlord as well as the Snaga Siren, I think both of them in tandem feels just a tad greedy to me, possibly. All right, our lineup's official, though. <laughs> it's still, still, still kind of hitting me that this is new patch. Um, it's, it was started off with a bang as far as the patch goes, but yeah, the, the later on picks didn't necessarily have uh, too much impact from the patch. You mentioned the Naga Siren, Sven's also a hero that received nothing, in fact when it came to patch 7.22. So again, a mix of that old school comfort, but also trying to take advantage of said new patch. I want to go all the way back to Chen though. Uh, it's a hero that I personally have history playing. I, I do like the idea of the hero. Um, I like the, the idea of the microwing. They, they kind of changed the hero over time, of course. And now with the new uh, divine favor, I, I don't know how sold I am on this new Divine Favor. I like the previous Divine Favor, the idea that it was that single target, you know, you really buff up your Phantom Assassin, or, or in this case, like your Sven. But now it's just a solid aura buff for everyone around you, which of course is great. I mean, there's items like Vlad's, etc. that we talk about all the time on how you want to try to have one on your team. Uh, I just wonder if it's enough, I mean, with the numbers and everything. But uh, I suppose we'll see. Well, uh, it's... Uh... I think actually one of the major themes of the, the patch has come out, you know, other than agonyms for everyone, was that they've made pushing just that that tiny bit harder, it feels like, you know, with the, the double catapults coming a bit later, with the towers offering a bit more armor, even multi-shot with the glyph. I'm, I'm very excited to see that. And so yeah. I, I think part of the thing is now Chen actually at least has to stand with his, you know, divine favored secret. Bet. Made for live betting. Very effective. We'll find out. Yeah, well, he gets a level one, too. Again, I was intrigued to see how that was going to work out, and he does get a level one. So off the bat, it's one more regen for Sven and Lane, uh, as well as then four more damage as long as he's close. But the R is honestly pretty big radius, too, now that I'm looking at it. It, uh, it fills a whole screen plus a little bit more, so that's that's actually a pretty large radius. Oh yeah, that's that's not a default radius. I I didn't have no. a chance to see it because it I had just assumed it was default radius in the patch, but no, you're you're right. That's that is pretty big. But there are three of them here in this bottom lane. Also, look at the top lane. There's battles all over the place. Not Grata. He picks up the banner and it might come at a cost for his life. It looks like that's the case. A fateful debuff is not enough. Frost credit for the first blood. And in this bottom lane, Silent, he tried to go for the rune himself, but they found him. So two quick kills for the final try. The bounty rune control, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a uh, two for two, if I'm not mistaken. But in the end, a two for nothing to favor the final tribe when it comes to the hero kills. So, yeah, they have the benefit there, of course. And now the lanes are coming about. As yeah, so it will be the troll versus TA mid as expected. So Sven Chen versus a Brewmaster Nyx Assassin down here at the bottom lane. I mean, that seems like a lane. Yeah, I was going to say that's going to be annoying for Chen potentially. But uh, he is fine there with the Stormhammer reaction from Silent. But yeah, with that regen, I, I feel like Sven's going to have actually a pretty good time farming. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's as you say, just with, with this uh, change, it's going to be very difficult to harass anyone out of uh, a Sven lane. Handskin obviously can be a bit annoying because I assume Silent will want to put some points in the greater cleave and that allows you to get really easy uh spike carapace hits but uh i don't think there's really much kill potential now there's only 
it's a dual lane on a dual lane without the, the full tri lane. I don't think he should go down again if he plays it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't mention much about Lich, by the way, as a support option. Not really the most popular support as of late, but um, I'm actually just double checking. Did he get changes? No, Lich, or maybe he did. Uh, I don't uh, think they were ma major, but uh, Frosty's having a go at Nongrasa. They have the slow. He does have one point in the Riptide, but he doesn't even need it. Aero picks up the kill with the last tick of the Frost Shield. Yeah, you see kill in the end. The Riptide procs helping along the way, so 3 nothing start for TFT now. Um, but yeah, Lich, it was a 0.75 base mana regen that he has. So it's, it's I guess, a slightly stronger mana regen, so a slight buff there for Mr. Lich, who certainly takes a bit of mana, especially after the ever since the addition of Sinister's Gaze, so trying to make use of it here uh, with a Frost Shield buff that certainly is a strong ability in itself. Yeah, Frost Shield's just so nice because it has both uh, offensive and def defensive potential in the lane, so it's uh, it's a really nice ability. I, I I just remember when Lich came out, the Lich Juggernaut lanes were the, the banes of my existence. Oh yeah, Lich Grimstoke Synergy, definitely a hero that uh, 7.20. Certainly, we saw plenty of right after that. Uh, Hanskin, he was moving around towards the mid lane on the Nyx Assassin, setting up a gank, but decided better of it. And instead, is coming back towards the bottom, where he's going to find No Fear. Has that level 1 Holy Persuasion now. As uh, trying to farm with the jungle pole, but TFT will quickly thwart that off. As he goes to the side camp. Yeah, so I'm having a look at this mid lane, and it looks like Chessie, he's not having the best time on his... Uh... Troll Warlord Kuman, especially as he gets uh, more and more levels, this is going to get easier for him. So uh, I thought maybe they knew something I didn't with this Troll Warlord pick into T8. But uh, Chessie not having a great time here, and I think it will go worse and worse. So I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see him uh, look towards the jungle to recover on this Troll Warlord. For now, he's 14 and 4 against a 14 and 8 Templar Assassin. Curious what kind of build we're going to see on Troll Warlord this time around. You do have a position one Naga Siren on your team, so of course the idea of something like a Battle Fury, I, I doubt we're going to see from Chessie. Uh, maybe more of that SNY drums, perhaps? Yeah, it's, uh, I definitely think, you know, you're right. He needs to carry the the early to mid game for his Naga Siren before she's able to get up. The man style and the diffusal is what she's looking for. So, you know, SNY, diffusal, maybe even just a... Um, a Yasha into the BKB if they find that they're fighting a lot for the side of the final tribe. I, I think really his item build, it will depend on how aggressive Windstrike are being into him and how much he feels he's able to farm. And then to that point, actually, speaking of Naga Siren, you know, where, where is she going to go? Uh, we've seen Naga Sirens recently. It seems like the whole early Radiance rush isn't necessarily as relevant as it has been in the past. So I doubt we're going to see that, but perhaps just something more standard like the Yasha, even the full Manta style. Fuso Blade, good on her. That would, yeah. that would be my prediction, at least. Uh, th there, there are two ways of really building the Naga Siren. Like, it's always you're building the Manta Diffusal at some point, but it's about what items you want first. Um, you know, more farm orientated Nagas, you see them go for the man style because obviously, you know, the illusions they help you farm. But if, if your team needs to fight, then you're looking for that Diffusal because it just makes you um, <laughs> such a threat uh, very early on. Brewmaster, Beastmaster, even at the top lane, the Frost Shield's on top of him. They're running him down, Fadeball, helping a little bit, but is it enough mitigation? It looks like it is for now, and Andrada pops us out. Five minute hits, by the way. So those bounty runes have spawned out. Arrow's, in fact, maybe overcommitted himself. He gets tossed back in from Rubik, and Era, indeed, is going to fall. No, just out of range. Never mind, the Fadeball comes out, and Andrada still trying to run, and he will survive in the long run. Well played by Windstrike. They keep Beastmaster alive, they turn on Lich and they managed to pick up their own Fanny Rune and top it along. Yeah, it's a really great, great jukes in the trees there by the Beastmaster. And, and little non Grata, they have a really great synergy there. They, you know, correctly identify that, you know, now that we're healed up, we can make, we can turn this fight. We don't just need to escape. We're able to fight. We're able to survive. And then, and they both look for the shrine. Nyx Assassin goes down. Troll, he's trying to walk away. The trap from TA, though. Slowing just enough, the evasion helping with the whirling axes, but it is not enough for Chessie. So, the supporting cast assisting in that middle lane at two for one turn. I mean, you look at the creeps that Nofir brought an Alpha Wolf and a Wildering Ripper, not necessarily game changing units, but helping out there. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, obviously the the little bit of bonus uh, damage was helping out, and it is worth noting that these are these are probably the best creeps that he's able to get because uh, he's uh, can't dominate level six creeps just yet. So yeah. you can't look for something like Sato. You can't get the hell there, Smasher. These are quite literally the the best creeps that he can get around, and he's just giving Kuman all that extra attack. And with the catapult, I think they're looking to push actually. Now, why not divine favor? It doesn't affect. Creeps? No, it doesn't look like it affects creeps. So just his own creeps as well as Dying heroes. Okay. Yeah. So it's not going to buff up this catapult. Is a yeah. very important point to make. So, th so the push that you used to get from the chen, obviously you do get it with the creeps, but you're not getting the increased siege damage. And now they're actually looking to Kuman into this mid lane, but they missed the sun on Tim, so they're just going to take down the chen, walk him down, the frost shield, Chessy able able to lay in all the damage. Kuman keeping his distance, he'll be good to go, but yeah, good hold there from TFT. A lot of tower damage though, taking on this mid-tier one tower, so it makes you wonder if Chen is really that worried about the death there in the end. As he's already back up and good to resume farming. And speaking of tower pushing, top lane, Beastmaster and Rubik take out the tier one tower just over seven minutes. So Windstrike clearly has a game plan of pushing early objectives with this lineup. Yeah, they they just very nicely identified that, you know, you see both supports in the mid lane. There's no way um, Frost on this Naga Siren is going to be able to stand up to you and your boars. So just forcing him back into the jungle and capitalizing on that tower. And two points already in, in a beast. And he is going for that Vladimir's. Uh, I think, I'm very curious to see if he goes for a medallion or if they're looking for even more push with the Necro books. Um, it'd be interesting to see what Non Grata thinks about here. He needs to go Axe, let's be honest. He needs to go Axe, he needs to show off the new Whirling Axes. Or not Whirling Axes, the uh, Wild Axes there. No cool uh, that, no. But I doubt I, he's gonna get it there. <laughs> I mean, I, I, will, I will be disappointed if we don't see at least one Aghanims this, this game. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I really think that's what Ice Rog was thinking, you know. This yeah, item has been underbought, it's been underutilized, it's one of the really unique, well, I mean, you're right. You're right. You're obviously right that Hon had them, but you know, it's one of the the nice things that Dota has. You know, literally game changing item while in the bottom lane. First use of the Bruce split seems to have netted them a kill onto Silent. Yeah, the spiked Carapace assisting there as well. He didn't really have a choice to do it. The Storm Hammer though, hoping to run away. Not enough though. And uh, two versus one helps. Chen has not been at the bottom lane for a while. He's been more interested in defending the uh, mid lane and even at the top lane. In fact, he recalled somebody. I'm guessing he recalled a Rubik to the top lane. It looks like. Yeah, Rubik's gonna come up and they're gonna push the tier two tower with this. So you have a Helper Smasher, you have a Centaur in hand. They're wrapping around the backside. Frost Shield will mitigate some of this damage, but Lich has to keep his distance. This looks like it is gonna be a pretty easy tower kill for Windstrike at this rate. Uh, I mean, Chessy is rotating in. They don't have Song of the Siren to set know. anything up here for the side of Final Tribe, and it looks like they are just gonna retreat away, realizing. Uh, that the rotations were coming. They have these the, these two Hawks down. So they saw Chessie coming to defend the top tower. Yeah, I didn't expect uh, that much of a rotation from the early looks of it, but Chessie with him coming in, sure. It is the call to back off. TA can't necessarily capitalize uh, with the mid-tier one, but Troll now finding his way back to the mid lane. But I'm taking a look at the net worth now, and Sven is doing very good. Silent, he is top farm of the game by quite a bit. 4,400 net worth on him. He already has an Oblivion staff early on. So he's going to be finishing that Echo Saber soon. And then we'll see where he progresses from there. You know, things like, of course, the BKB do come to mind. Dyer but uh, at least has the early Echo Saber. Yeah, it's, uh, one thing I just wanted to talk about is for the side of Windstrike, they have a really, really good uh, vision control on this map because you have uh, the, the TA traps as well as the Hawks. And that means they're always going to be able to set up, you know, uh, either aggressive vision with the Hawks or, you know, when they're going for a push, they'll be able to set up nice defensive vision behind them. So it's uh, it just gives them that extra map control that you might not be thinking about thanks to these yeah. two abilities. and. You know, obviously that helps you find safe spaces to farm and also be able to take safer pushes. Nyx Assassin, he's trying to get level 6 due to the later, so he can have that vendetta. And speaking of vision, start taking advantage for TFT's side. But uh, only 5.5 currently does have a wave pushing in thanks to Rubik. Rubik did steal the spiked Carapace. We'll see if that comes into play. Oh yeah, we also, another change by the way is... Now that it's 10 minutes, their first tome has spawned. And by tome, I mean tomes, because there's now two of them that spawn at the 10 minute mark. 
and it helps a little bit more for these uh, under level supports. And that was another theme about this patch that I noticed. It really feels like it helps supports because not only that, it was the war change, right? Where the Observer Wards and the Sentry Wards decreased cost, and you also get more for destroying Observer Wards on top of that. Yeah, it's, uh, and uh, not only the fact that there are now tomes, so you know both your supports get one, is they they decrease the amount of experience. In fact, it takes to get towards that level six. So we should see earlier level six on supports, and maybe even more rotations with that. But Rubik here in the bottom lane, affected by the break, but I think Nilla is going to be just fine. Yeah, Nyx Assassin, very early spiked Carapace right there. I don't know if it even necessarily reflected anything because it stunned him anyways, but either way. It's uh, Rubik getting away, and you'll be good to go. Recovering now for the time being. So that's over at the net worth once again. Three of the top four do belong on the side of Windstrike. It goes back to the early objective taking, specifically that top tier one, a big part of that. And they're going to smoke now towards the mid lane, would be my guess. That's the tower, not the most life. And sure enough, TA is already there doing some damage. Chen is going to be exposed. Battle transfer you for this, but out comes the roar. And the hand of God also to make sure TA stays alive. Nick's er, got frost up here on the Naga Siren with all the illusions. She still doesn't have her song of the Siren, by the way. She is almost leveled up to perhaps get it. Now Grotto's limping away. Out comes the chain. Frosty eventually goes down. Bounces over to Chen, but that is it. Good spread from Windstrike. A little bit of luck in the bounce right there as well. And TA melding up. She's now turning on Brewmaster. Spends in pursuit of the Nyx Assassin as well. Spiked Carapace deterring some more auto attack. But as soon as it wears out, the Stormhammer comes out. And you see no fear just walking on by with not much life. But he is going to survive for now. That's a Chain Frost from Rubik then coming out. It's a little stolen. He uses it on Chesty to finish off the Troll Warlord. And they're going to lift up Lich, bring it back in. Double kill from Silent. That was some good execution from Windstrike right there. And they get the tower kill to top of the lock. Yeah, it's a great, great play by uh, Windstrike there. The side of the final tribe, they really thought they could uh, take down this TA. It all starts off with a very nice double impale uh, from Handskin, but uh, just as soon as that uh, troll ultimate was used, they go for the raw, they uh, disengage a little bit, uh, constantly uh, kiting them around with the Naga Siren. And once that flight was split up, they didn't even use the God Strength very early on. You know, we just saw it there used for that uh, final kill. And uh, Prue split, they. I thought that Chain Frost actually was going to wreak havoc, but it uh, bounces to the high ground. And as you say, they split up very, very nicely. So it uh, didn't have many bounces. So very nice execution there from the side of Windstrike. They uh, they kite out the Troll Warlord ulti with that roar, and they just uh, drag the side of the final tribe around the map and are able to get whatever kills they want. You also see Rubik has a very early gem on him purchased now as well. So not only counter warding, but on top of the Nyx Assassin and his stealthiness, not so stealthy as long as Rubik happens to be nearby. Lil's off to a fantastic start. Uh, and he still has the Chain Frost stolen, by the way. 20 more second cooldown on it. Certainly could come into play once again. A recall on the TA brings you to the bottom lane. And that's because Windstrike wants to now go for the objective down here. They want to go for the tier one bottom. And they're going to keep this momentum going with uh, already a 4,000 net worth lead currently. That they haven't. Speaking of that, okay, TA jumped in, but good spike carapace. Yeah, I think it's really important for the side of Windstrike that they don't let their advantage slip. Because you know, we can already see in the net worth, you know, Frost... Uh, he is beginning to recover. Obviously not quite up there uh, with Silence Man. He does have four points in the Greater Cleave, but Frost will continue to accelerate on this Naga Siren. And especially once she gets that um, Manta style, her farm is just going to go up and up and up. So they have to continue taking objectives. They can't let the Naga Siren become the biggest hero on the map because yeah, uh, at that stage, it will be very difficult for them to deal with her. Yeah. Certainly. I mean, they do have some decent cleave with both Sven and even the sideblade attacks from Kuman, but ultimately you do not want to let her get too crazy. And, and actually, now that I think about it, the bounty raids are spawning, by the way, and we see them getting them. Um, illusion changes are also something in this patch. Um, and so we hear like Naga Siren certainly benefited from the illusion changes. The one specifically was the, the lifesteal modifier. Now we've worked with the illusions. That stands out to me. So that's going to be intriguing to see if uh, perhaps even a satanic later on is something that the Naga Siren looks to prioritize. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. The, the illusions are just that uh, tiny bit more tanky now that they'll be able to lifesteal. Uh, but, it, you know, it is kind of a double-edged sword uh, because illusions are able to lifesteal themselves, but you're able also now able to lifesteal off illusions. So, you know, uh, Sven previously sure. would have healed from the damage he was doing, but you have uh, 
your Vladimir's already completed on non Grata, and you know your Sven goes in, cleans up a whole bunch of Naga Siren illusions, and he's gonna get a bit more health for it. Yeah. Oh, wind strike. Well, though the tier one tower is dead, they figure it's time for Roshan. It's just the first Roshan, he's a little bit beefier from what I believe reading in the patch. Um, at all levels even, so. It's uh, not as easy as it kills was before. In fact, it's not gonna be activated by Frost, and they just walk right in. Oh, they're looking to steal this Roshan. They win him pretty early though. Can they combo with follow up? Nix has him, that's done. Not the greatest. Chain Frost gonna be throwing out. Roshan still has plenty of life. Silent, you might want to worry about fighting other heroes. That's final split activated by Brewmaster. Rubix picked up, but he buys back immediately. Kuman, the refraction's still up. If you try to walk away, they lose the Beastmaster as well. The lift up on Kuman, and down goes Chen in the midst of this. Chessie still has Battle Chance, by the way. Might come into play now as is gonna be stunned up with the Impale. And there's that Battle Chance. Good job with the Stormhammer though. Saves Kuman for the time being. But now Chessie's on top of Silent. He's not gonna any root proc, so he goes range form as Kuma is still alive with that refraction. They're turning onto the Naga Star, getting solo, Frost running away, and will manage to somehow survive. Finally, a root comes up, and Kuma hides with the meld. The chain's still off on Troll World, and he just can't finish the damn job, though. The kite is very real, favoring Windstrike. And now Troll having to turn around and run away himself. Lil with the Fade Bolt. This would be a dieback, remember, is going to be a dieback, but the burn applied. And Jesse indeed goes down when it's all said and done. And the chases might still be on as Windstrike, Warcry buff. Looking to go after the Brewmaster, but that will finally be the end of it, and Windstrike goes back in for Roshan. Wow, uh, that was the ambitious contest in the final tribe, but it looks like it was going to be successful for them in the start. They, you know, they're able to walk in, get a nice Chain Frost off onto two of them, but, you know, it's still only level one Chain Frost, and it, uh, it wasn't able to do that much damage. Uh, the side of Windstrike, they do uh, try to focus on this Brewmaster before he gets off his split, he's able to do it successfully. And they lose the, the Chen, the Beastmaster, as well as the Rubik. But the buyback from Lil, as well as just Kuman's survivability there, it really looked like the TA might be focused down. But they're able to come out the other side and uh, win that fight against the final tribe. The troll, I feel so bad for him. They just had to, they had the trap damage, they had the Cinder Brew, and eventually he, he did just uh, tick down to all those uh, damage over time effects. I, I do gotta say, troll was pretty unlucky with the lack of root procs because he hit Sven at least eight times or something like that as melee and he did not get a single root so uh, later on in the fight he happened to get one that I noticed but yeah it's probably feeling a little unfortunate there playing the troll there, but that's just part of uh, one of the downsides of playing such a hero that is based on that RNG you can't yeah, guarantee it's that it's gonna proc and, and, I mean, it is only level three. You, you obviously need that level four to be able to press the ensnare button. So uh, it's a bit difficult for him. They do just miss Zibi in these trees, though. He gets out, cut through the trees, but unable to find him. So instead, they'll go for the tower. S and Y now finished on Sven. And there we go with the tier two tower kill. Templar Assassin still trying to finish that Desolator but has the Aegis, and they're just gonna walk up as five. This is gonna be a very good push from Windstrike. And yeah. a tough one to stop at that. Uh, Naga Siren does have the song, they do have Breeze of it, they do have all the ultimates that are important to them. But obviously they now have the Aegis for the side of Windstrike. And, you know, they didn't win the fight without it. Constantly applying this Frost Shield. And I do remember we talked about Nongrata what his item build might be. And we can see he's gone for the Necro books. So it's pretty clear that the side of Windstrike, they are just looking to carry out this push, claim objectives before Frost is able to truly come online. Uh, unfortunate for them, they can't finish the tier three though, because they're now going back for the shrine area, but just enough of a hold from TFT. The, the life on the tower is very low. They, they were more concerned about getting back though and covering the bounty runes, which is understandable, of course. And that's exactly what they do. In fact, no fear, I think he recalled did he, okay, he recalled Sven from the bottom lane. He was pushing that out, and now he brings him back to the top. So they are going to reset and look to finish the job, and then we'll see if they maybe back off for a shrine. You can tell it's very solid, kind of almost like clockwork play from Windstrike right now in terms of their movement. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's as you say, they go back to... Uh, pick up the bounty runes, they correctly identify that there are these time-based objectives on the map that we Dyer's need to achieve, and they're using No Fears Chen just so successfully to make these uh, rotations, you know, Sven, you TP back, but we're going to get all three of us, now we're going to claim the tier three, Dyer's it looks like they really do have a game plan, and they're executing it very, very well. There we go, Dyer's the shrine's destroyed. 
So yeah, as expected, they're playing the very safe. You'll see so many teams that they're like, oh, well, we're at the base. We might as well try for a little bit more. And then the inevitable happens of the team fight and then they make a turn. So yeah, why risk it? Windstrike has a comfortable lead. Take out another objective in the shrine and reset and now push down mid. So they're going lane by lane. They're going to take out tier two mid. And it, it is becoming more and more difficult for TFT to do anything. And they do have Frost farming away, but everyone else is not is definitely behind where they would like to be, especially this Troll Warlord, who's now working on that BKB. Yeah, uh, Frost, it, he does have his Manta style as well as the Diffuser Bait. So these Naga Siren Illusions, they are going to start Dyer's doing something in the fight. You know, if you're attack. able to focus them on the Chen or the Rubik, they are going to start to melt. Um, I am a bit surprised at the, the Spider Wind Strike. I thought they might uh, try to push the Tier 3 just to force the rotations back from Frost as well as the Troll Warlord. But they just want the Shrines. They're settling for them. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not surprised at all. Again, the way they've been moving, they're, they're going to go to bottom Tier 2 now. After, well, they can't, I guess, because it's pushed out. You do see... Oh, who is that? That's Rubik down there now trying to push it out. There's also a double damage rune, which uh, they did not see, unfortunately. So it is going to be picked up by Naga Siren. And that's good news there. But Hanskin, okay. Well, Hanskin's just dead. Yeah, they, they roared him. They had vision for him because they already have the Necro 3s up. And that's the second tier 3 for the side of Windstrike. Now, finally, they managed to force the Naga Siren of Frost back. But uh, without your next Assassin, you know, he's built this Meteor Hammer. It's quite a nice item to combo with the song. But if you don't have an X, you're not going to be able to get that combo off. And there's Windstrike just retreating once again. So TFT's already having to deal with only having one outer tower up and neither shrine. It, it's just can't stress enough how difficult, how much more difficult that makes a game like this. Uh, in the case, if you're the final tribe, especially this earlier on. But that's what they're up against now and going to be even that much more reliant on Frost playing the Naga Siren. I do notice Brewmaster, Zebe trying to build a Radiance, which certainly will be good against these cores on the Radiant side. He's got 2,000 gold saved up, so he is getting there. But it's with the lack of being able to farm in comfortable areas, it, it might take a bit longer than he hopes. That's uh uh, I'm gonna be honest. I think that's a, it's, it's a very optimistic radiance game for the brew. Uh, we could, you know, we you can see very clearly at the side of Windstrike they they just want to push, but he does have a tiny bit of downtime now. I think Windstrike they're probably gonna continue to play it safe. Maybe they'll they're, they're looking to solidify their map control. They've already totally dominated this dire side jungle. And, you know, eventually they'll reclaim their own jungle, look towards this tier two, and hopefully uh, as soon as that's all over, um, the next Roshan will be up and then high ground is within their purview. Next Roshan, a potential spawn of about a minute 45, probably a little bit longer than that is the usual. And, oh, that's a catch from Lil. On the Troll Warlord, the Primer Roar follow-up, the Wild Axe is coming out. And the Whirling Axe is in his own face. Eventually going to be killed off. Oh, Frost. He got here very late with the song. So he tried to save his teammate, unfortunately, just a little bit too late. And we'll be on cooldown now. It's level two song, so only 84 second cooldown even. But Yeah, but it's a, big, it's a big ultimate cooldown as well as a pickoff. And so the side of the final strike, they realize that this is definitely an opening, not sticking around for that Roshan. And they recall the Sven as well to this mid lane. So I wouldn't be surprised if just off that small engagement, they lose a lane of racks. Yeah, it's one thing to kill the troll, but you're right. Song of the Siren is what's deterring this rating team from overcommitting in the base, but they're doing that now. Fu Man jumps in very deep onto the lift. Going to be thwarted off by Hanskin. But the impale's done, but Sven with the God Strength, he's still sitting on top of the racks, is going to finish it off. Once again, Frost Shield, still annoying. The ranged racks, a little more difficult to kill with now Troll up. When Strike is not taking any chances, they are falling back and going to try to get any overextensions from the side of TFT. Bounty Runes did just spawn as well. And we do see Windstrike now falling all the way back to make sure to pick those up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Windstrike, you know, they... they... They just realize that's their timing, you know. You kill the troll all of it. it doesn't even matter that he has buyback. But Song of the Siren down, that's when you're able to push. Uh, it's highlighting that, you know. Uh, they're like, Silent, forget about this tier two tower. It doesn't matter. We're going mid. We're claiming racks. And that's exactly what they do. And they now already at this 15 minute, sorry, 25 minute mark, have a 15k advantage. So things looking very grim for the side of the final try. And I think it's time to start Frost. I think he finally has to fight. Yeah. Uh, certainly, 
This is a game that he needs to be involved in. They need to have a big song initiation. You mentioned the Meteor Hammer on Nick's side of Okay, gonna song. Who are they gonna open on is the question. Maybe the Rubik right here for the Nyx Assassin is gonna land the Impel. The Meteor Hammer after the fact, the Battle Trance not activated. Oh, the stolen song from Lil! He was able to steal it! Are you kidding me? He didn't use anything after. Legend, he has to buy back right off the bat. But that stolen song definitely thorning off initially. However, the new kill Shen, another buyback from Nick Assassin as he did fall. God's Drain pop from Sven, but gets it stared up immediately. So this was a worry. He can be heavily kited. Up here, Kuman chasing down Frost. The Frost Shield helping him for the time being. The Chain Frost also going to slow things down. Kuman, the side lane auto attacks the Spike Kirpus, but it's still enough damage to take out Naga Siren. She's down for 45. Buyback from Rubik now on the other side as Zibe is attempting to run away down here. Sven, the misses kicking in constantly. Now Grata also in pursuit though. And no blink or anything on Brewmaster. It makes this a very difficult getaway. And near impossible, yeah. you can say. So uh, it's taken out and Troll goes down again. Yeah, it's Lil, that buyback paying off instantly as he finds the Troll Warlord trying to TP away as he gets back into his fight. Uh, just finding him round here and Kuman's there to be able to output the damage. So with that massive fight for the side of wind strike, uh, I think this is just going to be the second lane of Rax. I don't know how, how long you're willing to hold on. Obviously, you do a buyback on the Naga Siren, but at six yeah. seconds, you don't want to use it just yet. And, I... and... Yeah. Sorry, you, you talked about the fact that they're able to fight out uh, Silence uh, Sven, and that, that is very clear that, you know, he was thrown up in the air, not able to output any damage. But it just doesn't matter because the rest of the side of Windstrike, they're wreaking havoc on everyone else. Yeah, they do plenty of damage around the Sven, even the supporting cast, especially Beastmaster, certainly does plenty. But I honestly still can't get over. Nagasar and giving up a song like that is, it just shouldn't happen. <laughs> especially with the distance that he was at. He popped song way back in his base, like right after you have to mirror image or something, or I guess you can't start to ensnare, but at least mirror image, right? Because the last thing you want to do is give the Rubik song of the Siren. So definitely well played by Lil, but that certainly was a reason too, as one strike was able to win the fight. But another fight breaking out here. Spanny jumps on top of. Uh, Couldn't tell that's Frost over there in the back lines. So Naga Siren just trying to run battle trans activated by Troll Warlord, but he got stunned up immediately after. Finally going to be wearing off. He goes on the silent, but you can tell Troll just can't do a damn thing. He's dead for 50 more seconds. Naga Siren cop of the storm hammer. The God Strike Echo Sabre auto attacks a song from Frost. Is enough finish, but he got stunned. Oh, and the wild axes. Connect on top of him. Something tells me. In fact, there you go. GG well played is the call. And Windstrike will take the one and only game against TFT here in Group A. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, Windstrike, they, they played this strategy to a T, you know. They, they came out uh, ahead in their lanes anyway. Uh, choose all the pushing items. Just uh, hit the timing of that Roshan, take the tier twos, take the tier threes, take the shrines, go high ground. You know, it's a very methodical method to play and uh, they were very disciplined about it as well. You know, realizing that, uh, you know, we're going to stop our pushes for things like bounty runes um, before we look to look to go high ground. So Windstrike just playing a very, very clean game of Dota there. Whew, that was, that was something for our first 7.22 patch match. I mean... We didn't necessarily see a ton of the changes uh, out, well, but you kind of did at the same time. You mentioned some stuff like the tower changes, but that clearly wasn't too much of an issue for Windstrike. They, they drafted a lineup that was comfortable uh, pushing still. And the Chen factor with the aura, certainly a change of pace for the hero. Like I said, I still not sort of I'm sold on the idea of nerfing the numbers to make it more of an aura base rather than just that single target buff, but uh, definitely play played its role here at the early home of the Dominator as well. There's Auras across the board. With that, the Beastmaster and her Beast, they had a Vlad's, Necro. They, they, they had so much to work with in terms of grouping up and pushing. And they, they clearly had their game plan. They executed flawlessly to an extent. It, it really was impressive play, in my opinion, on Windstrike's part. So I haven't had a chance to see this team a lot recently. I, I am genuinely impressed by the way they played against the Final Tribe. Yeah, it's, uh, you can definitely see how much this Windstrike team has grown in a very short period of time. And you, you can see why they were able to make it to the minor now. They're like, just such great play. I, I am a bit curious about the fact they put, picked this Chessy Troll Warlord into Kuman, though, because uh, Kuman, a very, very skilled player, uh, mostly known for his outstanding Storm Spirit performance. But you just saw him have another absolute rager here, 6 0 7. They weren't able to stop this TA from snowballing at all. We did not get to see the Yags, though. That's the unfortunate. That's the one thing that I'm not happy with Windstrike and their performance. But ultimately, they ended the game too quickly. Let's be honest.
All right, anyways, game one in the books here for today. We're just getting things started, though, ladies and gentlemen, the Chi League Invitational European region. We're going to continue on with our following match. It'll be Priest versus Sexy as F in another best out of one of our opening matches. I'm Breaky CPK, joined by Hasbass. Stay tuned, guys. A short break coming up. We'll be right back. <laughs> 